Hello and welcome to my first video with a voiceover in actually quite a while. <laughs> I've also been in sort of a general slump in regard to uh, making videos. Uh, both because, you know, I've been busy <laughs> in real life and also because it's been so hot where I live. Uh, one thing, it's it's uh, quite a lot hotter than it usually is, but it's also so, so humid. So it's been torture. I haven't even, you know, just the thought of, uh, you know, going to my computer, sitting down in this hot, humid little uh, office space I have. It's just been, I, I haven't been able to. But thankfully, we have some bad weather at the moment. So <laughs> it's actually been, you know, 20 degrees, for instance. Uh, yesterday it was lovely. It's just lovely weather, and there was a bit of rain. It was just perfect. <laughs> I want it like that every day, please. Anyway, this Art Nouveau mansion I'm building today uh, is inspired by an article I read in The Independent. Well, I didn't read it in The Independent. I didn't have a physical <laughs> version of the newspaper in my hands. I did read it online. Um, but this article, which I, I have linked below if you want to read it yourself, uh, talks about um, the Art Nouveau mansions in uh, St. Petersburg. And it's really interesting, both like the story of uh, how this guy, Peter Nesmith, uh, found this old book in a second hand, hand store, completely forgotten, pages falling out of this book, uh, detailing uh, the art architecture with uh, drawings of how to build these um, Art Nouveau houses. Uh, and it, it sort of uh, shows that this uh, Russian Art Nouveau mansion style was like a mix of all sort of uh, influences. You had uh, Islamic, you had um, Norwegian, uh, there's talk about an English Art Nouveau, you have French of course, uh, all these sort of influences and the uh, different styles uh, uh, in this uh, old fantastic book he found. So <laughs> I thought it was really interesting uh, both to read the, how you know he discovered this. I love old books, I love books in general but like old books and old forgotten books there's like a, a person behind it who you know who thought it important to write this book and uh, some a lot of books will end up being forgotten but it's always a treasure to you know rediscover a book or find an old book um, and uh, Peter Nesmith he ended up getting this uh, book which was in danger of being uh, completely forgotten reprinted um, and translated uh, to English and then afterwards it was quite a success so it was um, translated to some other languages as well so that's like a wonderful story in itself but he also went to St. Petersburg uh, to to look, out, uh, look up some of these old Art Nouveau houses and what had happened to them and um, if you end up reading the article and I would recommend that you do uh, we have all these uh, pictures of all these ruined um, houses, you know, these fantastic, you know, they're almost sort of artworks in themselves, these Art Nouveau uh, houses or duchess. I'm sorry, I don't speak Russian. <laughs> I hope that was pronounced all right. Um, and they have, these houses have been built like um, rewards uh, ever since uh, Peter the Great. And then all the way up into the Soviet uh, Union was a thing. They've been used to sort of uh, reward um, people, you know, <laughs> the powers that be had uh, rewarded people by building these fantastic Art Nouveau houses. But they've since sort of been uh, abandoned and uh, some of them are ruined and quite a lot of them are burned down as they did, did tend to be uh, built with wood. So. Which is also why I've gone for this uh, for wooden. Uh, this is a wooden uh, Art Nouveau house <laughs> you're looking at. Uh, but I did try to. Um, I was quite inspired by these uh, houses in uh, Saint Petersburg, uh, and I did try to imitate the, some of the roof designs. We are a bit limited in what we can do in the game. We can't get, you know, completely these uh, organic forms you want. Uh, but uh, I had a lot of fun with the roofing anyway, uh, and that was the inspiration for it. So it's, I suppose it's a Russian Art Nouveau, 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 
Russian Art Nouveau mansion. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong as well. Russian and French, you know, neither of these languages I can actually speak, so it's a perfect uh, thing to choose for this, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, I, I think you should check that article out. But, you know, wait until this video is over, obviously. So, <laughs> no. Um, this house ended up being a two-bedroom, two-bathroom house. It's sort of a... Well, it's a fairly big, small family house. Does that make sense? <laughs> you know, it's not a big family who lives here, but it's a big house. Um, and I wanted... Oh, I had a lot of problem with the garden to figure it out. Because, uh, you know, without deco and, and even with mid-century uh, modern, you've got these sort of uh, very purposeful uh, gardening. You know, sort of, sort of uh, uses a lot of squares and edges and it all has to stand like really sharp. But Art Nouveau, you, it's gotta be a bit more organic, <laughs> a bit more wild perhaps. So uh, I tried to to get that in the garden, I don't know if it succeeded. Um, I did manage to find room for um, a proper place for the, the child to uh, play the, the lives a child here. If you didn't know, <laughs> you do now. So uh, I usually end up building houses and then I'm like, oh, okay, so I did put a child's bedroom in, but there's like no, uh, you know, there's no room for any toys. <laughs> and there's no playground equipment outside. <laughs> so, so it's probably the most bored child in the whole world who lives here. Uh, but I did, you know, <laughs> manage to fit some playground equipment into the garden. Yeah, also some of the time it's just because I'm thinking, ah, it doesn't look very good to have like a swing set here. So it's just not going to be any playground equipment. But luckily this house has a back garden. So that's where it is. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, oh, another thing is so weird. But I have never watched, okay, this is a complete uh, subject change, just so you know, complete change of topic. Um, <laughs> but while I was building this, I was sort of watching the old He-Man cartoons. He-Man. Anyway, <laughs> and, and I say watching, but really I was listening to them because I was obviously... Yeah, I was watching them on this computer, you know, while I was building, so I was, it was just the audio I was listening to. But it was quite an interesting thing because I've never, as I said, I've never watched these cartoons before. The only exposure I've, I've had to... He-Man, that sounds wrong. <laughs> the only knowledge I've had of He-Man before was uh, from that uh, um, from that meme, you know. That's it's an old meme <laughs> now, um, and and from watching the She-Ra cartoon on Netflix, I watched that. I thought it was quite good. That's why I want to give uh, the He-Man cartoon a, a try as well. And well, I can't talk. I can't say anything about the quality of the the cartoon, you know, the on the visual side because I didn't really watch uh, the visual side. But I found the audio was <laughs> so strange. <laughs> this is now turned into a review of the audio of the He-Man cartoons. If you, <laughs> it's so stupid. Um, <laughs> but what I found interesting, uh, I actually found found it quite funny at times, you know. It wasn't, um, I don't know what I thought it was, but uh, was a lot of these characters are really quite sassy. <laughs> I didn't expect that. I thought it would be, you know, completely neutered, um, sort of company has to sell toys. So they make this cartoon and, you know, this cartoon is, well, it's not the best cartoon by, you know, modern standards, but I found it enjoyable and I, I like the characters, which I suppose is the main thing when you want to sell toys with your cartoon, you have to have likeable characters. All the villains have really, really annoying voices, especially uh, Skeletor, who's like the main antagonist. I really hate his voice. Also, they have all these uh, sort of small um, magical beings. They also have really annoying voices. <laughs> and, and you know, sometimes the uh, the audio, again, I don't know completely about the visual, but I can tell that sometimes the audio doesn't match up with the sound effects. You'll have like a massive explosion and it'll be like, oh, I'll just jump down here. 
whatever you just blew up dude and you're just going to be like oh that hurt but luckily i'm the strongest being in the universe i'm he-man so <laughs> apparently this massive uh, explosion didn't hurt me at all <laughs> but yeah but i did uh, find it quite enjoyable maybe i should actually watch the cartoon sometime and not just listen to it <laughs> that might be on my to-do list uh, but i also found it uh, it was really nice to have it as a background. Usually, I just have, I just listen to the radio when I'm building, uh, and sometimes, as another hidden uh, guilty pleasure of mine, uh, <laughs> sometimes I like to listen to tra uh, you know, tea spill, drama uh, videos <laughs> on YouTube while I'm building, and it's especially about the makeup c community. And it should be said, I know nothing about makeup. I wear mascara maybe once a year and that's about the amount of makeup i do but you know i think it's about well it's gossip isn't it it's basically gossip sometimes i listen to gossip while i'm building ah, i suppose he-man is better than that <laughs> also another thing um that surprised me okay i promise well i can't promise this might turn into me talking about he-man the entire time but I promise I'll, I'll try to talk a bit about the house in, in just a bit. But there's another thing I want to, to say about He-Man. Because I had watched, maybe a year ago, I watched this uh, video talking about whether or not, speculating, whether or not uh, He-Man would appear in, in the She-Ra cartoon. And they're uh, talking about how it would be probably be for the best uh, that he didn't. Uh, spoiler alert, he doesn't. <laughs> Uh, anyway, and they talked about um, the video as they talked about how He-Man was an example of toxic uh, masculinity. So I didn't have uh, a very high regard of the you know protagonist of this uh, series going into it, um, and I was surprised because I didn't get a sense of at all of a uh, toxic masculinity. Uh, if anything, I think it was a bit ahead of its time. Um, because you do have like a, a number of uh, very strong female characters. Um, I think his mother, Queen Melania, Melania, Melania. Hmm. <laughs> I can't remember her name. Um, anyway, Prince Adam, He-Man. Prince Adam is his uh, elder ego. Um, his mother is a fighter pilot from uh, Earth, and his uh, childhood friend, who is also his love interest, of course. Uh, although she's in love with He-Man and she doesn't care about Prince Adam and that's the whole thing when you have a secret identity. It's a very um, a Superman and, and Louis Lane, Clark Kent thing going on with them. Anyway, uh, she's the captain of the guard and also uh, fully uh, capable. And uh, I think, and uh, I suppose He-Man's boss is the sorceress was also Tila's mother, but that's a whole other thing. Also, she's also called Tila, just to confuse. You. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, I suppose she's He-Man's boss, so I wouldn't say there's like a lack of strong women in the series. Uh, you can talk about how they're drawn. Again, I didn't watch a lot of how they were drawn because I mainly listened to it. <laughs> but um, but then again, I mean, if there's, there's anyone who's like in the who lacks clothing and then this He-Man <laughs> he, he just wears like suspenders and, and a loincloth so uh, I suppose they are sort of like equal opportunity in the lack of clothes on the, the characters again I don't know a lot about it because I, I mainly listen to it <laughs> maybe I should watch it um, oh and another thing I think the scariest character just based on the, on the voice is uh, this uh, child character? All the child characters sound really, really weird. Um, and then there's this one astronaut from Earth who's supposed to be like a grown person. You know, she's traveling in space. She also sounds like a child, and she sounds well. She sounds more believable as a child, but she's supposed to be a grown woman. I don't know what that's about. I'm rambling now. Anyway, the children sound really scary as well <laughs> I don't like yeah well I don't mind it but but it's a thing I've noted while I've been 
<laughs> listening to it. Uh, one good thing. Anyway, yeah, so I don't think it's uh, an example of uh, toxic masculinity because this made like a point uh, out of women and men being equal and being both capable of uh, kicking skeletons at, uh, behind and uh, so on. I was about to say a word I'm not supposed to say. Uh, <laughs> also, I found this very cute. Uh, it has this whole um, a part at the end of every <laughs> every uh, every episode you have like uh, one of the characters come up and say so what did we learn today uh, uh, and I think it's very wholesome and I think every single uh, show that's made today should have this segment like what did we learn today um, you shouldn't judge a person based on the color of their hat so even though your dad doesn't tell you he loves you uh, he loves you and you should tell your parents you love them and that's an actual <laughs> ending to one of the episodes um, and also, I think more shows should have that like so uh, John didn't tell his sisters that he's actually their cousin that was a mistake and uh, caused a whole lot of trouble so children remember to tell you <laughs> <laughs> your sisters if you're actually their cousin instead also don't sleep with your aunt that's just a bad idea anyway I think all shows today should have that uh, sort of summary at the end that would be great <laughs> it's so wholesome <laughs> anyway um, to change the focus a bit back on the house just for a bit um, I ended up going with like a very cream and white color scheme um, I suppose there's a bit of a uh, green in the kitchen and uh, some of the other rooms ha do have a bit of a different color uh, but it ended up being like, like very light and bright and I ended up perhaps you know that's not surprising when it's Art Nouveau but I did end up using a lot of stuff from Realm of Magic quite a lot of stuff from Vampires as well which was a bit surprising because I mean Vampires the Vampire pack it's more Victorian than Art Nouveau, but again, I, I mean, they did come right after each other, so maybe not that surprising. <laughs> um, yeah, so I don't know. Uh, I think I had it ended up being not quite as colorful as I wanted, but then again, I am quite satisfied with that, how it ended up looking. Oh, it'll be a bit, but when we get to the children's bedroom, I think. First of all, that's the room that stands out most in this house. Uh, also, one of the rooms I liked the most. I thought it was quite a cute concept I came up with. We'll get back to that. Meanwhile, I want to tell you about one of my favorite quote, quotes from um, from He-Man. Because that's what you uh, tuned in to, to listen to me talking about He-Man. I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, to set the scene, um, the queen... the the king, all the important people are gathered in the throne room. Well, I don't actually know if it's the throne room because then again, I didn't watch the show. <laughs> but I assume it's some sort of throne room. It's probably the throne room. Anyway, they're all gathered and they're waiting for Prince Adam, who's, you know, He-Man. That's his alter ego. I already mentioned that. <laughs> um, and uh, I think Man of Arms, who's like this uh, the king's right man hand and very important he's one of the few people who know he-man's secret identity anyway the man of arms tries to cover up for um, he-man or prince adam and uh, i think he, he gives this uh, excuse like um, he's really tied up with the uh, important government work uh, where teela you know just uh, butts in with a sassy remark like Oh, I didn't know Lady Amanda was important government work. And I was like, oh, okay, it's that kind of show. <laughs> There's also like one point where I can't remember. Somehow, uh, Skeletor, the the antagonist henchman, I'll call him fat. It's really weird because you know he's a skeleton. I don't know. <laughs> it's a weird show, and it gets even weirder when you don't actually you know, get the whole visual part. 
<laughs> I suppose I, I, I listened to him and like it was like an audio book. I don't I don't think I recommend it. Or maybe I do. I did I did find it quite uh, entertaining, so maybe I do recommend it. <laughs> Anyway, to uh, get try to get like a bit back on topic, <laughs> although it's uh, sort of too late now. Um, I did have a lot of fun building this house, and I had a lot of fun with the flooring. I made so all sort of, uh, I think at least, uh, pretty cool patterns. Uh, I did use uh, two things. I used the um, Control plus F, where you can sort of toggle the tile to a quarter tile, which gives you a, a lot of freedom with. Um, making cool patterns so you don't have to use like a full tile and um, gives you an opportunity to add a bit more detail and then I used um, and it's different for from uh, you know the keyboard you have I'll put a number of options on but there's somewhere on your keyboard there will be a button you can press uh, that can rotate the flooring as well and that works as well when it's uh, a quarter tile so you can um, mix all sort of crazy patterns with your, with your flooring. Um, so I thought that was nice. I, I like to use that. Okay, so we are approaching uh, the creation of the children's room, my favorite room. And I'm sort of building it up too much now, aren't I? Uh, I think maybe it's just because I've made it quite different from the other rooms and I've just sort of entered this uh, white and cream haze and this sort of brought a light well not a light but something else <laughs> it broke up and, and this whole white and cream situation so I, I thought I ended up really liking this children's room and I went through a whole lot of iterations of this room and I I didn't quite know what to do with it and this room you see me building it's like attempt number six maybe and they've all been like wildly diff different and been like pink and blue and green and white and black and then this uh, final iteration we ended up with which I quite like I like the idea of um, I may I mean this child who lives here probably not a goth because I don't think they have been invented yet if they had, then she would definitely be a goth. Actually, I don't know, know what time period uh, this house is supposed to be in because it doesn't have a TV and that's on purpose. Usually I forget about putting a TV in the house, but in this case I made the conscious decision not to be put a TV in the house, um, but it does have like really high tech computers, so <laughs> I don't know what uh, time period this is. Maybe it's sort of uh, anachronistic. It's like out of time. They have computers, but TVs haven't been invented yet. So I don't know. <laughs> it's a mystery. Maybe it's even a bit magical. There are two rooms left over, which I didn't build like two tiny rooms on top. So if you have a spellcaster who can teleport up there, you could totally have like a secret spellcaster, which, uh, you know, uh, secret room. That could be fun. It would fit with the whole uh, mood of the building, I think. Anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed watching this build, and I hope, I really hope you enjoyed uh, listening to me rambling about He-Man. If you didn't, then I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, you can stick around, subscribe if you want to. Um, check out some of my other videos, maybe. Um, in any case, I hope you have a wonderful day.